good, good morning. Um, sorry for the inconvenience. Also, I have a bit of a cold, so if you cannot hear me, just ra raise your hand and uh, I'll try to explain a bit more. Um, <clears throat> so you've seen um, the talk by Jörg about Mesos DCOS, and if you're now interested in being able to run a little data center or little cluster on your laptop, then you might be interested in this talk because with mini Mesos you can run a little Mesos cluster on your laptop just to try it out, to experiment. Next one. Okay, so the outline for this uh, talk is gonna be, first I'm gonna talk a little bit about Mesos, um, some basic concepts. Then I'm gonna talk about mini Mesos, uh, what it is, why we created it, and um, I'm gonna explain some basic features of the tool. I was gonna give a demo, but obviously our, my laptop doesn't work with the screen, so. Maybe later at the conference, I'm gonna stick around here. You can um, come to me and I will show you on the laptop how you, how you can uh, run Minimesos. Also, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the design and implementation of Minimesos itself, how we, how, we de how we created it, and then there's some time for questions. So what is Apache Mesos? You can think of it as a distributed systems kernel that runs acro across a bunch of machines. So imagine you have uh, a few racks uh, like th this, where you can install Mesos on, and then you can, you can use all those resources together as a single machine, single, single computer. So you can program against your data center if it's a, if it's a single machine. Um, as was said, said before, Mesos was created uh, at Berkeley, and then um, eventually it became a top-level Apache project, which is, uh, it has been for a while, it's getting more and more popular. So the idea behind Mesos is that you can run different software stacks on top of the same cluster. And um, so instead of having to create separate clusters for individual stacks, you can use a single cluster and have more utilization. And um, we, we also wrote a blog post about this uh, topic by uh, Phil. He ex explained some of the reasons why, why you would want to use Mesos frameworks um, to uh, solve this problem. So. This um, shows what I just said. You have a, a bunch of separate, separate clusters with separate uh, pieces of software. You can merge them together in a single, single cluster and have higher ut utilization. Mesos has been, uh, has, has been used a lot in, the, in these large internet companies, uh, as you've, you've heard in this previous talk as well. Um, you can have a look at this link where, where it, uh, it shows all the organizations that are currently using it. Okay, some, some basic concepts of Mesos. The uh, idea of, there is a, um, there's a concept of a master and an agent. And the agents, every, every couple of seconds, give offers, resource offers to the, to the master. And then in turn, the master can then decide to give those, uh, give those resources to uh, frameworks that, that can then make scheduling decisions. So, if we look at the complete picture, you would have a Mesos cluster with a, with a bunch of agents, uh, a master, zookeeper for coordination, and then you would deploy these frameworks on top of it, and then the frameworks themselves make, make the final decisions on whether, where to place a task, when to restart a task, when to you know, do all sorts of uh, stuff. And one of the popular, most popular frameworks, I think, is Marathon, which can be used to deploy long-running services. So web, web services or APIs or other microservices, you can just deploy them on Marathon. They will, they will keep running. Like also if they fail, Marathon will automatically restart them. And it has a bunch of other features as well, such as placement constraints, um, health checks, it has an API, and um, this, this is one of the most popular frameworks. Another framework is um, Mesos Elasticsearch, which uh, we have worked on at Container Solutions. We have, um, Work together with Cisco on uh, writing the Elastic stack for Mesos, and um, this, this framework has a, has its own UI. It, it also does some scheduling decisions, like re restarting failed tasks, and um, also I can announce that uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has offered some resources to test this framework at a larger scale. So I'm currently we're currently in the, in the process of deploying um, a Mesos cluster on the Cloud na Native cluster, and then we're gonna we're gonna test a few scenarios uh, of the Mesos Elasticsearch framework. So one of the things we are looking into is um, our testing placement constraints on different uh, racks in the cluster. 
So uh, because it, it turns out that often when there's a failure, it it, it happens with uh, at, it, ha it happens at the rack level. So then then it would be good to schedule tasks on different racks. So in case one rack fails, you still have fill up. So this is one of the the, in the um, scenarios we're we're going to test. So in the next in the next couple of weeks, we will be creating a few blog posts on this topic. Okay, so I've given some in introduction to Mesos, and now let's talk about mini-Mesos. Okay, so it's basically an experimentation and testing tool for Apache Mesos. You want to be able to quickly run Mesos, do some tests, um, get a feeling how it works. So you, you can run it straight on your laptop. It has a CLI and a Java API, so it's, it's, it's written in uh, Java, and um, everything runs in Docker. So we use, for the agent master, Zookeeper, we use Docker images. And which makes it easy to uh, run on your machine. You, the only requirement is that you have you have Docker running. And also, this work has been sponsored by Cisco, because during the uh, when we made these frameworks for Elastic, we um, developed mini as, as a result of this. So the story behind it is that when we were working on these frameworks, we um, you know we found out that it's pretty hard to develop them. You know, the series of systems are hard and. Um, you run into this problem, like it orchestrates on my machine, right? So it, it might work on, on somebody's machine, but then if you want to port it to somebody else's machine, it's, it's very hard to set it up, to configure it. So we decided to do something about it. So if you look at this picture, we have, we have these frameworks, right? Mm -hmm. And then our typical uh, development cycle would be to build the code, you know, create the jar files, then do a deployment on some cluster, do some tests, go to the UI, maybe check the logs, and then if something uh, failed, we had to go back to our IDE and start coding again. Um, but this, you know, this this um, this created a very long development loop. The building all these artifacts and doing deployments, it, it might take like 10, 15 minutes before you even got anywhere. So we we wanted to fix this uh, problem. What we wanted to do is we wanted to create um, something in between this development cycle, which you can run from a unit test even to test our scenarios. Up front, instead of you know deploying deploying them to this cluster and doing manual testing, so not, now we can actually test stuff within J, uh, JUnit. Okay, so I'm now going to explain how this actually works, wh what you can do with Minimessos. Yeah, so <coughs> Minimessos has been uh, is inspired by Vagrant. I'm I'm sure most of you are familiar with Vagrant. You you can run init the init command, which generates a, a default configuration file in this case for mini-missiles, and, and then you can use up to uh, install, to, to run the whole system. Also, we have a few other CLI tools, so you can do a PS to print all the running frameworks plus their, their tasks in there, so you could, for example, by default, Marathon is installed, so you could, you could see Marathon running plus some tasks that are run via Marathon. There's the info, sorry, there's the, the info command, which prints all the IP addresses of all the endpoints, so it prints the master IP, uh, Zookeeper IP, and, uh, and so on. And then we also have an install command, which allows you to quickly deploy uh, tasks via Marathon. So when you have a JSON file with the Marathon definition, you can run install, and it will deploy it on uh, Minimessos. OK, so let's have a look at the Minimessos file. So we have a few cluster-wide properties, which means these are some properties you can set once, and then they apply to all the containers. So you can change the logging level, you can change the message version, uh, timeout, things like that. And then there, there we have different, uh, we create a little DSL for mini message file. We have um, the idea of, of, of like a block of conf configuration. In this case, configuration of an agent. So in order, in order to test, for example, the Elasticsearch framework, we wanted to, to test whether it could deploy on different agents and also that it won't, it won't schedule uh, multiple tasks of a given framework on the same agent because there's no use. So th therefore, we we could create these configuration blocks, like maybe uh, have three have three agents, and then r run the framework to test if it indeed schedules on three different agents. So th this is uh, this is some example Java code, where if you would if we, if you were to use mini messels in JUnit, you could use a class rule um, construct. And what it would do, it would load the mini-messos file from the class path, create a message cluster object, um, and before the test, it would start it, so that during the test, you have now have a running message cluster, and you can do assertions against it. So in this case, we, we have the message uh, cluster object, we get the master container from it, 
and then we can do a search. It's like there should be three agents running, and if that if that uh, succeeds, then your test is green. So these are some simple ways to uh, to test this. Okay. Also, what we did is we added a default application to Minimesos, the Weave uh, scope, which is an um, interesting tool where you can visualize all the containers that are running on your system. So it's uh, by default uh, it, it appears as an app inside the Minimesos file. So uh, by default, if you do init and you do up, you have this uh, running on your system. But you can also, you know, you can change the apps if you want. So, so the demo, unfortunately, I cannot do it do it live uh, here. But uh, later, I'll, I'll, I'll be around if you're interested. Just I will show you on the laptop how it how it works. But you can also do the demo yourself uh, online, even. So we have a really cool environment. Um, Katagoda is a is a online learning platform where you can learn Docker, Kubernetes, Mesos, all sorts of stuff. And we have our own little environment uh, from Katakoda where you, know, you can, in the browser, just try it out. So it, uh, you, you have a little virtual machine. You can, you can type the minimesos commands, and you can check it out for yourself. So you go to minimesos.org slash try. OK, so if you want to install minimesos, we have a uh, shell script that will put the minimesos um, CLI in your home there. And then when you first run it, initially it pulls in some images. But, but, but then, uh, you know, this might take a few minutes, but afterwards, uh, it's pretty, pretty fast. If you want to look at the demo later, you can, you can go to the Container Solutions GitHub page. Uh, it, it, it has the slides, it has, the, uh, it has a mini message file in there, uh, a marathon file for Elasticsearch, because the uh, demo I was going to show you would be to do mini message up, and it would, by default, install the Elasticsearch framework. And I would, I, I would show you the different um, configurations. Okay, so let's talk about design and implementation of this tool. How it works basically is you, you, you run many methods on Linux or on a Docker VM if you're, if you're on Mac, for instance. And then, of course, the core of many methods is written in Java. So we have a bunch of libraries that we use to, uh, to talk to the Docker daemon, the Docker Java. We have some, some other APIs, uh, sorry, uh, some other tools for um, uh, asynchronous programming to, to test whether, whether a process is running or not. And we also have this Groovy DSL for the mini message file. So these are just a little, a couple of components. And then we, we of course, we, we use uh, Docker images for the um, different processes. We create our own images for, for Mesos uh, Agent and Master, but we use uh, agent, um, images from the community for Z Zookeeper and Marathon. And, and, and then we have a few additional services. Like I said, we have Weave Scope, Console, Registrator. These are, all, these are optional. You can just add them in the, in the mini message file if you want to install them. <coughs> so there are also some limitations to this tool, um, well, and mainly around networking, because the way Minimesos works, it um, the agent runs in in a Docker container. But also, let's say you want to start a, a Docker container inside an agent, then uh, it, it currently uses the um, Docker socket from the host. So what happens is, this, the, the Docker container will sort of run alongside the agent and not not nested inside it, and this means that if you run a uh, you know because it will run alongside it, it will have its own network stack, its own IP address. So therefore, some of the um, networking uh, tools won't uh, match up. Also, another problem is that uh, the mini message containers, they write to the host, but they, they, and, they, and they run as root. But what happens is uh, they write the file as, as root instead of the regular user. So this is also a problem. And the way we solved it, we, we solved it by writing the file and then changing the ownership afterwards. Which, which works, but it's, of course, not, not very elegant. Another thing is that um, service discovery is also not supported yet, because not right now you have to copy-paste um, the Docker IP addresses when Minimesso starts. So if you want to go to the master, you have to copy-paste the master address, paste it in the browser. And uh, so this is also something that could be improved. So if you're interested in Minimesso, so you you're, um, want to try it out, you find a bug, you can let us know. We really appreciate PRs. And uh, we also have set up with Travis that it will automatically build your, your pull request. So it's very easy for us to, to do a quick review and then m merge your code in. So I, I hope we can stay in touch uh, later. Um, these are some links you can, you can check out uh, if you want to learn more. Also on, also on Twitter, we have a Twitter account. We have a Slack channel now as well. So um, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you for your uh, speech. Uh, I think we have some time for questions. Do you have a questions from? Okay. Are there any requirements for the other underlying system that you run it on? Underlying requirements. Yeah. So what you need is you need Docker. I think I think yeah you need Docker one twelve because um, all all the uh, all the images will run as Docker containers. So it, it it will pull the images from Docker Hub and then start them up. So if you don't have Docker, you, you can unfortunately not run this. But otherwise, anywhere you can run Docker, you can run this. Yeah. Yeah. One more over there. <coughs> Are you planning to provide uh, to introduce different providers for the instead of Docker? For example, my laptop is not powerful enough. Could I, for example, run it in AWS? Is it even possible, feasible? Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question. Because, uh, for example, with Vagrant, you can change providers. Oh, okay, yeah. This, this way. So your question is if, if there are different providers? Yes. Yeah, uh, not at the moment, but we've, or, we've already changed the code a little bit so that it could be, uh, we could do this in the, in the future. So we now have a factory object inside the code that, that creates all the Docker containers, but we could add another factory object to maybe to start rocket containers or something else. Yeah. One more question. Uh, who is supposed to use minimizers? Um, I mean, is it a tool for developers, for sysops uh, guys, admins, uh, framework developers? I mean, what is you know the the main target group? Uh, Originally, the target group was framework developers because you know we were developing frameworks and then we we could use this tool to to quickly. Uh, Test our code, but I think also um, I think it's interesting to use as well to to learn more about ops and, and these cluster managers because uh, if you want to if you want to solve all these problems like service discovery and, and all these other concerns, uh, then you know installing this tool and checking it out it gives you a good overview of, of how everything should should work. Uh, so I, I think it's also a bit of a learning tool. At least that that's what it is for me because if if I want to implement these features, I need, really need to need to dig in to, to all these all these concerns to get them uh, implemented. Okay, anyone else? <coughs> the final question. Is it intended to run basically on localhost or can I run it on some machine reachable but somewhere else and will I still be able to access the services and so on? Yes, uh, we, we have written a blog post uh, on how to deploy Minimesses on AWS. So I think if you Google that Minimesses AWS, you'll get to our blog. And uh, the only, only thing is you need to um, make sure that the ports uh, that are on your container get mapped to the host so that it becomes available. But uh, yeah, it's fine. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for, for your talk. Uh, sorry about these technical problems. Uh, I'm sure we can, uh, if you're interested in Minimesis uh, demo, uh, you can find Frank somewhere around. So a big applause thank and thank you.